Hey guys, it's Lou. I'm back for another uh, <clears throat> recent final finds. This is for uh, some uh, flea market finds and also some online purchases. I have about 10 or so records to show. Uh, first of all, what's playing in the background, if you can hear it, is Gladys Knight and the Pips, greatest hits uh, on Motown. Um, Wow, this is such an amazing album. I don't have very much from Gladys Knight, but certainly uh, should look for more. I have one other uh, vinyl, uh, an album I believe called Imagination, which um, is probably from the early 70s, and this is some of her earlier stuff um, on Motown. Uh, this is excellent stuff. First flea market find. We have Split Ends uh, and the album True Colors. This is, uh, Split Ends is the um, band from New Zealand that includes the Finn brothers, Neil and Tim Finn. This is their, I believe, third or fourth album. It's from 1980, it's their most popular album. Uh, it includes the big hit, I Got You. Um, Split Ends had that sort of new wave-ish um, post-punk sound a little bit, a lot of a lot of energy, great, amazing keyboards on here. Um, and I got into Split Ends, I only knew their one song, uh, actually I knew two songs, I knew I Got You and I knew Six Months in a Leaky Boat, but I didn't know this album very well. Um, I originally had got into the band Crowded House and had several of their, or had a couple of their vinyls back in the 80s, their debut album. Uh, which of course I don't dream it's over or something so strong world where you live. I was a huge uh, Crowded House fan, saw them live a couple of times. So I had uh, their debut album, self-titled. And I also had their second album, Temple of Low Men. Uh, this was uh, a little bit less successful than their first album, but included the big hit, um, Better Be Home Soon. And while I got into Crowded House, I started digging a little bit into Split Ends, and I ended up getting, uh, back then, this Best of Split Ends album called History Never Repeats. Um, has some of the songs I mentioned before, I Got You, Six Months in a Leaky Boat, uh, Message to My Girl, uh, a really nice compilation, but this came as a result of me knowing a little bit about Split Ends, but mostly being uh, a big Crowded House fan. Okay, the next flea market find. Lately I've been trying to get some John Mayle and I got this album called USA Union. Uh, my last John Mayle, you may remember, was an album called No More Interviews from 1979. Didn't like it at all. Uh, it wasn't a blues album and uh, was actually quite bad. Uh, this album uh, I knew a little bit going into uh, purchasing it. Um, it's from 1970. It's, uh, it comes after the album Turning Point, uh, which was a live album, and after the other uh, very famous Blues Breakers album. Uh, this is the first album that John Mayle made with an all-American backing band. The core band on this is a trio of uh, bass, uh, guitar, and violin. No drummer. Um, and John Mayle on uh, harmonica, uh, keyboards, and vocals. This is a great blues album. The guitarist on here is a guy that I didn't know called Harvey Mandel, who apparently was uh, a big influence um, and quite well liked by Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top. I think probably the find of the day was Iron Butterfly Ball. Uh, this is Iron Butterfly's third album. Uh, it came after In Agata de Vida, which is their most well-known album. Um, they still had the most of the classic lineup on this album, and uh, there's some amazing keyboard playing on here. Reminds me at times of The Doors. Um, not that they sound overall like The Doors, but the keyboards at times reminds me of that. But this was uh, something I didn't expect to find at all at a flea market. Now we have the greatest hits, Booker T and the MGs. Um, so obviously everybody knows the song Green Onions and that's on here. So this is an early comp from the late 60s. 
Um, and if I find other Booker T albums, then great. But this is quite a good, uh, quite a good collection to have. Back from 1988-89, we have Edie Buchel and the New Bohemians. Um, I had this originally on cassette. Uh, first year university, remember playing this a lot. Um, she had the big hit, the song uh, "What I Am." Uh, what I am is what I am. Are you what you are or what? Um, sort of a copyright there on the, the Popeye song a little bit, I think. But uh, Edie Burkell now is uh, maybe better well known as Mrs. Paul Simon. Uh, but this is the first album she made with the band, the New Bohemians. Uh, they only made one or two other albums since then. Uh, she made some solo albums and she also did some collaborative albums with uh, Steve Martin, the comedian, who was also uh, quite a accomplished banjo player. So uh, I've heard clips from that and it's actually quite good. This is uh, very much sort of an indie rock, uh, chiming guitars, jangle pop kind of stuff. Uh, on my favorite Canadian vinyl video, I showed an album by Ch uh, Toronto band Chalk Circle, The Mending Wall. Uh, that was their first full length album. They had an EP called Great Lake before that. And their second full length album is As the Crow Flies. Uh, certainly, le and this was their last album, certainly less popular than The Mending Wall, but I had this originally on cassette back in the late 80s. And uh, when I found it for six bucks uh, on vinyl, I had to grab it. Um, the next one is a flea market find uh, from my brother in law. Um, a lot of you guys have this. It's Changes Bowie. Uh, Changes One Bowie. Is it Changes One? Yeah, Changes One Bowie. Um, me and him saw this. He uh, took it for himself originally at the flea market because I have all the Bowie or most of the Bowie albums. So I didn't really think I needed this. But then he ended up getting the more recent Bowie uh, compilation. Uh, that goes all the way to Black Star. It has Lazarus from Black Star. This uh, covers um, Space Oddity down to uh, Golden Years. So it's not complete by any sense. Um, but it's still nice to have a bunch of Bowie uh, hits and singles all on one, one album. So thanks for this one, Sam. Online purchases. So I, I had this one originally on uh, CD, and it was one that I liked, and uh, I thought, you know what, if I ever see the vinyl for a decent price, I'll pick it up. Um, this is Elvis, Co the collaboration album between Elvis Costello and The Roots, uh, Wise of Ghosts. It's quite uh, quite a good album. I really, really like this. It, it will never replace um, his classics like... Um, you know, My Aim is True, or This Year's Model, or Armed Forces, or anything like that. But it's a really nice collaboration between Elvis and The Roots. And I uh, just want to show you the gatefold on this. It's a really nice picture of Elvis with Questlove. Sorry if there's a glare. Um, I really like this album. It, it's what a collaboration between Elvis Costello and The Roots. It's what you think that would sound like. Some really nice um, chilled out beats and uh, Elvis uh, a lot of times very sort of deadpanish vocals. But it's but it's him. Like it's um, it's something that I really 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 enjoy. It creates a nice mood uh, overall. Again, no uh, mega mega hits that are going to come off of this, but it cre again it creates a nice consistency of sound. And two left, we have Cream Wheels of Fire. Uh, this is the third Cream album. Uh, this one is, I had this on CD before as well. This album is, first disc is Studio Songs, um, all sung by Jack Bruce. Um, which is a little bit strange because there was a lot of vocals from Eric Clapton on the preceding album, Disraeli Gears. Uh, and then uh, the second disc, uh, one side, it's four songs, two songs each side, they're all live. Um, 
an amazing version of Crossroads, which is a classic Cream song, the cover of the Robert Johnson song, sung by Eric Clapton. And um, there's also a great version of Spoonful on this uh, really epic version, which of course is the uh, cover of the Howling Wolf song that Cream originally did on their first album, Fresh Cream. Then the fourth side has two lesser song known songs, um, Train Time, which is a cover, uh, I'm not sure who, who does that, and uh, the song Toad, which is uh, instrumental, um, an instrumental written by the drummer Ginger Baker. And last but not least, this was something that was on my want list for quite a while. It's Cream live at Royal Albert Hall. This is from the Cream 2005 reunion. Um, and the band is just on fire on this. This is a triple LP. Um, they're just playing so amazing. I have this on CD before and also on DVD. And um, just had to get it finally on vinyl. And the pressing on this is outstanding. Um, highly recommended for any Cream fans. Uh, it's not Cream as this as they sounded in the '60s, but certainly as they sound or sounded in 2005. Um, in my opinion, were blowing away many bands. Uh, Air clocked in, seemed rejuvenated, and was just playing guitar. In, in a way that he hadn't played guitar, I think, in uh, in years. And um, obviously, the other two, Jack, Jack Bruce and Junior Baker, they haven't lost. They hadn't lost it as well. Um, this is a fantastic, fantastic album. Okay, everybody. So thank you. Uh, I want to thank all my subscribers uh, so far, and I want to thank anyone who's uh, made comments on my videos. And again, as always, I welcome comments on this one. Thanks a lot.